Welcome to the Roger Scholars edition of the LWC News Magazine. I'm Donald Dameron. And I'm Amelia Bessel. One of America's many great privileges is the ability to operate a business. There's no greater feeling than witnessing many customers coming through your doors on opening day after many months of preparation and planning. We wanted to find out more regarding the effects of small businesses in a community. Carrie Sellers tells us more. It's, well, there's a lot of duties, everyday duties for the mayor, but I guess the most important thing is to oversee the daily operations of our city government, that most of our town is of small businesses. We have a couple industries here, but uh, Columbia's always been about small businesses. It benefits our town by providing jobs to people. When, when you don't have a big factory or something, people have to come up with their own means of supporting themselves. And now, entrepreneurship is one way they can do that. Entrepreneurship is growing rapidly in the small community of Columbia. Shown by the success of businesses like Red Brick Recording and Cafe on the Square. Well, actually, Columbia, we have our own recording studio now on the public square. One of our, our local residents owns that. It's called Red Brick Studios. They do uh, professionally recording for music artists. They have people from Nashville up here probably every week. We also got some family-owned businesses like the Cafe on the square. Uh, it had closed for a while, but another family that actually started it out to begin with have reopened it, and we're excited about that. It benefits our town by providing jobs to people. Columbia can serve as an entrepreneurial model for other communities. Or something. People have to come up with their own means of supporting themselves, and now entrepreneurship is one way they can do that, and it just helps others to to go out and, and dream on their own. If they can see what this person has done and made it on their own business, you know, then it gives other people, maybe I can do that myself, put my idea to work. A lot of people have ideas and sometimes they're afraid to just, as they say, go for it and, and do it. Family-owned businesses allow individuals to become self-employed while also creating jobs for others. It, it probably encourages others and sometimes, like I say, when one business gets here, then it just kind of it's kind of a rolling thing. You get one and then, then another and then another. It's kind of a chain reaction. Small businesses allow a community's economy to flourish by recirculating dollars spent within the area. Your local people. We always encourage people in Columbia and in our community, you know, let's, if we can shop at home, if we have it here, let's shop at home. And that keeps money in our community and it, it keeps our businesses thriving. So if we can, if we can encourage folks do business in our own town, it helps everybody. It's time to get down to business. I'm Carrie Sellers reporting. Statistics show that about 50% of adults actually do consider opening and owning a business at some point in their life. With small businesses beginning to flourish everywhere, there has never been a better time to finally open up the store of your dreams. Coming up next, we will hear the truth about rising college tuition rates. Is it affordable for students in today's economy? The Rogers Scholars wanted to find out more. Based on the National Center for Education Statistics, the average tuition cost is $35,000 annually and rising. It's just the economy. I mean, you know, every prices are rising on everything, everywhere, whether it's buying a car or a gallon of milk at the grocery store. You know, it just costs more to live and to operate a business. And that's, that's a large part of why tuition increases occur. I think everything's going up. If you look at uh, textbooks are extremely expensive at, at every level and at, and at every school. But generally, uh, costs are going up. Well, you know, when you think about things in the market, what drives up the price is people's ability to pay or people's willingness to pay. And what we find in America is people are willing to pay for a, more for a college education. Now, obviously, it depends on the area and things of that nature. Keep tuition minimal at a minimal to go up at a minimal rate uh, but unfortunately uh, you know people want to have raises the electric bill goes up gasoline costs more things of that nature so you have to you have to go up a little bit but we we've, we've generally gone up less than four percent per year even though tuition is rising there are still ways to make college affordable save money in college if i paid for the uh, meal in the cafeteria i'd make sure i eat in the cafeteria I, whatever I paid for, I would make sure that I made 
pretty good use of that. Not all college students do that. When you get to college, it's just going to be budgeting, you know, managing your money, and you have to keep your grades up. You know, that's the other important thing. After you get to college, if you've received academic scholarships, your keys money for Kentucky residents that go to the Kentucky colleges, you have to keep a certain GPA in order to maintain your academic scholarships from one year to the next. But, uh, you know, when you're thinking about financing a college education, you have to think of it as an investment. It's not an expense. It's an investment because you're investing in your future and what that college education is going to do for you. Oh, yeah, it's a journey, not a, not a destination. College can be affordable for anyone. I'm Gabrielle Moore reporting. With college rates continually rising, it's good to know that there are ways to alleviate costs. Thanks for watching the Roger Scholars edition of the LWC News Magazine. I'm Amelia Bussell. And I'm Donald Dameron. Keep it classic, Columbia.